question of the receptor media. And of course, we know that we have problems with getting things soluble in that receptor media. So we add things to it, whether it's BSA or solubilizers. Um, can you comment about the issues of these additions to the media and their effect on the barrier integrity of the skin and hence the validity of the IBPT? I can talk about that some. We've worked with hydrophobic compounds for a long time. And in Dr. Rani's talk, there's a very good suggestion um, for the surfactants and the specific concentration to use. Um, so I would certainly advise people to use what <laughs> the FDA suggests. And then um, in Dr. Yang's talk, she was talking about using BSA. We've also used BSA as a solubilizer for um, hydrophobic compounds because it binds the drugs. The, the one experimental challenge with BS, BSA is when it dries, it acts just like a glue. And so it can actually freeze up your fraction collector, cause some other issues. But um, BSA is definitely a, a good physiological choice for increasing the solubility as well. Yeah, just remember with BSA, you if you're measuring for things like <clears throat> corticoids, you're going to have free and bound steroid on on the other side of the membrane as well. So, just be careful about that. Uh, and certainly, and certainly, credit should be given also to uh, Dr. Uh, Brunel, whose name's been mentioned a few times already. He was the one that first published on the use of uh, non-ionic surfactants as receptor solutions. Uh, he took it all the way up to 5% concentrations. Now, over the years, we've discovered you do not need that much, that as low as 0.05 to 0.1% is more than sufficient. And you can easily determine uh, solubility, as uh, Sam mentioned, uh, at what concentration of something like over 20 the new receptor solution is needed to achieve at least a tenfold greater solubility range than what you would expect to penetrate. And that will ensure uh, sufficient sink conditions. 